Hi, welcome to Free Academic English. I'm Geraldine, and today we have an interview with one of my students and friends who has recently taken the TOEFL IBT Home Edition. I hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are here with Jefferson, who has kindly agreed to tell us about his experience with the TOEFL IBT Home Edition. Jefferson, I'm very glad that you agreed to give us the interview. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, please tell us about the exam. First, um, the registration. You need to first create your ETS TOEFL account, then uh, pay for the for the home edition, pay for the home edition test. Uh, after that, you will be given to a Proctor U account. Once it happens, you can you have to schedule your the day. Before registering, uh, did you check the minimum requirements? Uh, yes, uh, I did that. Uh, I checked the the requirement first because since it's kind of a new version of the TOEFL test, I wanted to know if <clears throat> if my laptop, if the environment I live or I was planning to take the exam uh, was good enough to to do it. They just ask <clears throat> they just ask you to be in a empty room. In, well where nobody enter, enters and have a good connection. You don't need the best laptop, you don't need the best internet. They ask you just to have a good, uh, good enough internet, I think. During your registration, did you experience any difficulties? Not really, I think it's kind of easy okay. to do that. I strongly recommend is that you must have all your information uh, near to you because they ask you to to have your postal code which is kind of weird for peruvians to have to have zip code. <laughs> yeah, the zip code i didn't know uh, which is the zip code for this part of linze but <clears throat> there's a web page you can do you can just, just you just put your address and they tell you which is your zip code. Oh, After all, it's not that hard. And what about the payment? How, how is the payment? You can pay it with your credit card or your debit card. Like um, in any <laughs> internet purchase? Yeah, as any internet purchase. It's very easy to, to do that, actually. It, it was, uh, I had no idea at the beginning how to do that. Um, once you read the way the web page and follow the steps, I think it's kind of easy to follow them. Cool. And how long did before the exam did you register? I registered at the beginning of August, I think. It's like one month ago because I was not sure if the if the availability would uh, match with my my own ability, uh, availability was there any extra step between the registration day and the exam day i think you don't need anything else once you register you schedule the day <clears throat> uh, a countdown will appear on the proctor u web page once it comes to zero uh, a star button will appear at that stage, you didn't have to to confirm your requirements, but you did. Yes, yes, of course. So uh, that is optional. The Proctor EU webpage and the ETS recommend strongly recommend that. It's not mandatory. It doesn't matter. Actually, it doesn't matter if if you don't do that. But it, I think it it helps you to have to have peace <laughs> inside you because it. It makes you feel more confident that you 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 won't have to face <clears throat> any technical issues uh, on the test day. Okay, so what about the test day? Uh, how did you prepare uh, for the exam in terms of the technical requirements, the room, and every the devices that you 
had or didn't have to use? Uh, at the beginning, I was a little concerned about that because I thought that the room I was going to take the exam has to be completely empty. I mean, nothing else than the desk, uh, the, the desk, the computer, the, the, the paper and slips, uh, transparency you are going to use for taking notes. But I look at uh, I looked at uh, Magush video that actually that you actually recommend me that and it helps me a lot because uh, they tell you that the only that needs to be empty is your desk. I mean <laughs> the main in the video showed the room he took the exam. Uh, he actually had the TOEFL guidebooks behind him. But since it was not in a place that the man was very close, there wouldn't be any problem according to the man. Okay, and what about the, the plastic sheets that you use for taking notes? Actually, I, 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 have, I, have a, I have one of them here that I use to, to study because uh, believe me it's not the same to do that in a in a piece of paper than doing in these uh, sleeves this is the sleeve and this is the piece of paper you just put it inside it and you need to use a marker which actually could be one of those i try with i try with this one but if this one also works the problem is that as this is not permanent Maybe if you write with your hand supported in the transparency, you may erase what you have written. So I recommend to use this one. And I've, I've heard about uh, Sharply, I, I think it's a brand, mm -hmm. that yes. uh, a more thinner no, tip. tip to write, which according to my friend is Better, I asked the man in the work to you if I could have more than one because you don't know how many notes you're going to take. Actually, I needed two, and they they told me they told me that it wasn't a big deal since they are uh, completely clear in mark in in them. It's not a big deal. And and how was the connection with the proctor? You say yet that. The proctor you showed the start button when the time was when you had the time to take the exam. How was that? Yeah, once the, the, the can arrives to zero, uh, you press the start button and you you will be referred to a, um, I don't know to a window where, where a proctor will talk to you. You must follow some steps. You need to download an applet to have the conversation with the proctor. I mean, it's like a box for chatting. Then you can text in the you can text with the proctor using that box. Or the old, what what the web page says also is that since the connection is working, because that's the first thing that the that the proctor will do check your connection you just you can just uh, speak and the proctor will listen to you mm, it was, was not quite long <laughs> he uh, he just said uh, his name at the beginning mm -hmm. and then told me what to do and something i was forgot i was forgetting is that you need to download the um an app what's well, not an app but it's an ets program that it's where you actually are going to take the test. So uh, they don't tell you that it's mandatory, but I think that it's better to do that uh, previously, not the, the test day. So when you, to start the exam, does the proctor tell you you can start the exam or you just do it on your own? No, they, they tell you when to start because uh, you take the test in, the, in this ETS program, but you don't have your ID or your password. 
the uh, they do a remote control of your of your of your computer so they do all that stuff and they just write you with the box with the applet and tell you okay now you can start but what about your identification do you have to show your id yes 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 they actually in during the the system check you must follow some steps you need to put your face in front of the camera in a specific position uh, be careful and smile because that's going to be your photo <laughs> I did Oh, good I tip. Didn't know that, so my photo is kind of weird. <laughs> uh, and then they ask you to put as as you did with your face to put your 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 ID, okay. And um, something I read about and that I also recommend is that it it would be better if you use your passport because I read from a man, a man, about a man from Japan, I think, that he took the exam with his city ID, but ETS told him that there was a problem with his identification and he, would, he will, wouldn't receive his scores. So reading or getting more deeper, uh, the man said, said that ETS told, told him that it's better to use the, the passport. I don't know why, I have no idea because in ETS webpage, they tell you that you can use either your CGID or your passport, even your driver license, since there is a photo of it in, in, it, in it. But mm -hmm. the, the last thing you want is to have any travel with, with your identification. Yes. What did you use then? Your passport or your national ID? Both <laughs> in the in the state, but I use my passport. I thought that the proctor will ask me for that, but it's not it's just the system. The system uh, well sends you a message asking for your ID. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they did they also ask to check the empty room? or the empty desk, how did you show that? Yes, they ask you to show the room. Uh, you just, I don't know, lift your laptop and show different angles. You must begin, you, uh, you are asked to show the left first, from the bottom to the top, then the, the wall behind the, the, behind the laptop, the same way from the bottom to the top and for the right your right wall there they don't ask you to the wall behind you behind you because they are going to see it all the time and they has also ask you to show the what, what is um under your desk <laughs> oh okay <laughs> All right. So during the reading and listening parts, uh, was there any delay, any uh, problem connection? Did the proctor say anything or did you communicate with him during the reading and listening sections? No, there wasn't any trouble actually. You, well, uh, the first proctor name was Joaquin and I just talked to him until the test the test started. Then I uh, I do it by with by my own until I finish the reading and listening part. Uh, then you have the break, but something that it's very it's very common, but you must not be scared about is that the proctor will not be the same probably. I think Maria was the name of the second proctor. Oh, after you finish or after the break? After the break. And they tell you that, or, well, they send you a message in the box application that maybe the proctor will not be the same during the whole test. I, I had three. Three? Oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs>
<laughs> and so when the first test, when reading and listening end, what happens? Does the proctor tell you anything? Not really. I had to talk to her. Uh, I finished the, <laughs> the listening part, and then I went to the to the applet and uh, said, "Okay, hello." And well, they uh, by voice or by by text. I tried by voice at first, but since Maria didn't answer me, I typed, and then she answered me. But she gave me. Uh, the re she gave me the rules because even when you are allowed to leave the room, you are not allowed to talk to anyone. So I just went to the bathroom, then go back, and I asked for permission to erase the the transparencies because uh, I just have two, and I have used both of them, so I needed them for the speaking part. And after the break, uh, the same, what happens? Did you have to contact the proctor or did the exam automatically start or what happened? No, it doesn't start until the proctor, the proctor says it's, the, it's time to start. I mean, you must enter again the ID and the code and the password that only the proctor has to begin the speaking and writing part. But what Proctor uh, does at first is check the room again. You must show the the room, the desk that is completely empty and the room under there isn't any problem with the room. And remember that we had seen in some pages that you had to show with a mirror that you needed a mirror or your phone to show something. Did did that step happen? Yes, it's happened, but it's it's quite easy, I think. It, it just asks you to, well, a mirror, or in my case, I use my mobile. I put the, the camera option, but the front camera, mm -hmm. and put it the, in front of the screen. I think it's just to, sh to show that there is any, there's anything uh, in your, not in your computer, because they can see they will have control of your computer during the test, but they just want to, ch to see if you don't have any, anything type, anything, uh, I don't know how to say it, but any- Yeah, on screen. the computer. Yeah, on your computer, on the physical device. Okay, so that also happens after the break. Actually, no. They <laughs> asked me to do that, but I think it's because since they did at the beginning of the test, and they can see what do what I do all the time, even during the break, they will see if I I don't know paste anything or write anything in the in the, in the, in the computer. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So uh, after the the break finished, that was ten minutes. How long did it happen before the actual speaking test started? Like since they gave you the password and that. It's quite, it's, I think it's a minute. It's very, it's very quickly. It doesn't take too much. Okay. So during the speaking and writing, did you have any difficulties? Technical difficulties? Uh, <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> No, not really. It's quite similar to 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 the mugs you can find in web pages or in any programs. Okay. And so when the time was over, what were the instructions at the end of the exam? Yes, they uh, you must when, once you finish the test, your you see your uh, reading and listening scores. Then you press continue and they ask you, do, do you want to submit or do you want to cancel your scores? If you press submit, you they are going to send your scores to the universities or institutions that you have registered uh, when you <laughs> registered for the exam. If you press cancel, you are going to cancel all your scores, even the speaking and writing part, which have 
not been scored yet. Okay, so overall, how would you describe your experience? I think it, I won't say it's amazing. It's a lot of stress. I was really frightened out <laughs> before taking the test and at the beginning of the test. It's also tiring at the beginning because you are going to do one extra reading passage or two extra listening. And believe me, they consume a lot of energy. And what did but you get? Extra reading or extra listenings? I got one extra reading. And it was kind of shocking because I was practicing with three reading parts, with you doing three, three, three passages. So when I was in the last one, I felt, I felt very tired. I was not very used. Uh, I didn't feel too comfortable doing that. But I think it was also because I was really nervous. Have you taken the exam before? No, this is the first one I, I, I took it and I hope it will be the last one. <laughs> do, you yeah. think, do you think that it would have been better for you to take it at a test center? Mm, I don't know. It's a tricky question, okay? Because in, in one hand, on the, on, on the first hand, the positive side is that it's in your hand. You have all the accommodations, you will feel more comfortable in your home, definitely. You won't uh, waste time going or driving to the test center. And also the most important adv advantage is that it's only going to be you. There won't be anything, anybody else in the room, which I consider is an extra important benefit from the competition because at the test center, you may, you may take the exam with other people next to you and they can bother you. It's not their fault, it's just they are taking the exam. The problem uh, from my point of view is that on the other hand, you will face a lot of uh, stress for the technical issues, for the material you need, for you are going to be very aware that you may do something that will cancel your exam. I think that's a lot of stress that you can manage, but it still affects you. That's right. So will you share with us your results for the reading and listening sections? First of all, uh, we recommend to take a, a lot of mocks previously for those parts, because from my point of view, doing a lot of reading and listening uh, exercises similar to the TOEFL test helps you a lot. I mean, in, uh, it helps you really, really a lot because you get used to that. What I recommend is do it with the old version of the test, which was four reading passages and uh, more listening than now. Why do I recommend that? Because since you don't know how many passages you're going to read or how many listenings you're going to do, if you do with the, with the, with the actual version, you will not get, you will not be prepared for the extra exercises. It's not a bad idea to do, to do the long part. Uh, I mean, you are going to do less during the test day. It's going to be easier for you if you are used to do the long version. Interesting advice. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, um, for my scores, as I said, I, uh, I did uh, one extra reading. That's why and I was definitely more nervous uh, during the first one. But uh, that's why I got uh, 26 in the reading part. In the listening part, 
So it means that if you hadn't been nervous, you would have gotten what, 35. <laughs> it's a really great score. Congratulations. Yes, but I don't know why I feel more confident with reading part, which I get lower scores, and feel less confident in listening part, which I got a higher score. I got a 28 in listening part, and I really thought it would be the opposite way. <laughs> Congratulations, too. That was great. 28. I don't know if I could get 28. Excellent. Thank you very much for sharing. That's just, it's personal. Thank you. So now, what's next for you? Uh, if I, even I, even when I know that they are going to send me the scores, I don't know in ten days. I have contacted the DPS to ask a hey, I take the I took the exam on August twenty twenty fifth. Uh, when are you going to send my scores? And they told me uh, the scores will be sent in, during between six and, t and 10 days after you've, taken, you've take the, taken the exam. But my little concern was more because in the ETS account, uh, it still appeared to be scheduled uh, for the test. And uh, I thought, oh my God, uh, does that mean that my scores are not, what wasn't be sent? That's what was my concern actually. <laughs> But they confirmed that there's no problem, you will get your scores. Yes, they told me that if I took the exam, uh, it's going to be to be scheduled until my scores are sent. Once they send me my scores, the uh, it's going to it's going to appear the test day instead of the to be scheduled message. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have you have mentioned this this transparency these leaves or sheets of plastic as an important part of the preparation for a home edition. Would you say that is there anything in addition to that to prepare particularly for a home edition? Mm, no, I think that the most challenging part is the you must feel very comfortable with being sit during three or four hours with just a break of 10 minutes and uh, where you are going to have conversation listening reading and reading in only in, in english for non-native english speakers i mean i'm, a, I'm from um from here i i just knew spanish it's you will we usually uh, see another language as i don't know as when you study a course it's not something you many of us feel comfortable to do it all the time so what i recommend is just to be to try to feel comfortable with it try to listen to music try to i don't know speak in english with many people, it helps you a lot. It helps you too much because the problem with us is that we feel that we are not good enough at speaking or we feel that we are not good enough in English. And um, I think that it's not the, the, the real issue. It's that we just need some practice. We just need to feel it's a way of communication. It's not a big deal. Thank you very much for your time. That's all for now. Okay, my pleasure.